future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. And greetings and salutations, everyone, and welcome to Dr. Judy WTF. I am your host, Walt Lusk, and of course, in studio as usual, is Dr. Judy Rosenberg, a full-time therapist, therapist, <laughs> and a psychologist. Uh, we are broadcasting live at the Sunset Gower Studios here in Hollywood, and it's just an amazing, amazing place, and a part of the UBN, UBN Radio Network. You can pull us on Stitcher iTunes or directly from ubnradio.com and uh, we're going to go do a really really exciting series for the next nine weeks. Mm -hmm. Judy has uh, developed a mind map and guess how many panels it has. <laughs> it's got nine. So we are going and she's about ready to finish her book uh, Healing Human Disconnect. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. A and so for the next nine weeks we are going to delve into each panel in a very uh, more uh, in depth and for those of you who are just tuning in for the first time thank you so much we uh, really appreciate all the listeners and this is a call-in show also so if you want to get on the couch of dr judy feel free the number is area code 323-843-2826 and stay tuned toward the end of the show we do what we do every single show is we shrink that tune and what that means is we take a popular tune, and yes, we do take requests, and you can send those to info at drjudywtf.com, and uh, we read the lyrics. Dr. Judy interprets the lyrics through her mind map, and then, of course, we play the song. WTF, what does that stand for? What the... F Go ahead. Finish. Freud. Thank you, Walt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, could be Walt the Fun, but what the Freud? It's that, too. Walt it's, the it's, Fun, well, I like that a lot. Well, thank you very much. I, you know, I'm a fun guy, but not anything, I don't have any fun guys. So um, today we are going to deal with panel one uh, of Dr. Drew's mind map, and basically it centers around the cause or the wound. Right, and just a little background on the mind map for those of you who have never heard of the Be the Cause mind map, which is really geared toward healing human disconnect. And um, when we're disconnected from, uh, we, we go into pain. And when we're disconnected from in the first few years of our childhood, uh, we often, very often, mostly form symptoms around that wound. So today we're going to go right into the wound of childhood. And panel one represents the connection or rather the disconnection or actually both the connection and the disconnection between mother and infant because this is our first line of connect disconnect so if we're going to be talking about wounds of disconnect then we have to start with the cause yes and we it's, do it's the always, cause for being disconnected right and so just take it from the beginning when we are born into the world we are disconnecting physically from the mother's uh, body and so the first disconnect is the birthing process. And a lot of my patients um, have wounds just from that experience alone. Some mothers um, have premature uh, infants, and these babies are um, needing to be put in incubators. incubators and, and we actually had a show that addressed, touched on incubator babies, if you want to go back and listen. Yes, and, and what I'm finding is that I have a, a population of, of patients who I call my incubator babies, and these are the people who had to go from the womb right into an incubator, and this is a serious disconnect because yeah, yeah. what we need to form a healthy human psyche is we need touch consistently, we need eye contact, we need breast milk, uh, we need to hear mo mother's heartbeat, uh, we need to be mostly attuned to consistently. What do I mean by attunement? Attunement means that mother puts the baby's needs before her own needs. So when baby cries, mother responds. When, wait, when baby wets her pants or whatever, 
makes poo-poo in the pants, quick response. And uh, by attuning to the baby's needs, the baby gets the sense that he or she is safe. So the first disconnect is the birthing process. And now we're learning that this birthing process can be made much more beautiful and, and be made to be much more of a connected experience uh, by really taking the system into consideration and knowing that the mother and the father are, are truly the unit and as father nourishes the nourisher and nurtures the nurturer, then we have the woman who's able to give more because the father's supplying the love and the support. So if you look at it from the point of view of a system, then right from the get-go, the correct system that the, the child needs, the baby infant needs to really have that sense of safety is a really strong um, dyad. A, a parental Di diet. Diet. Ooh, there's a word. Yeah, I have to, you know, <laughs> put a couple of intellectual uh, words uh -huh. in there. Get your thesaurus out, Walt. <laughs> yes. So, uh, oh, believe me, I I whipped that sucker out a lot of you times. You have, right, uh -huh. right. So when you're talking about the birthing process, we now see that uh, mothers and infants can unfortunately disconnect from each other when the mother, for example, is um, needing to have a C-section and she cannot be present emotionally for her baby after, Just after the, uh, birth. The, the birth because she's in too much pain and they yeah. have to whisk the baby away to the nursery and so on. And now they're learning that giving birth uh, with the placenta intact and the umbilical cord intact, they call that a lotus birth. Now we're getting really into... Um, doing it the most correct way possible and so now the backlash is going the other way that we've got to keep everything intact and so now mothers are learning that uh, they can give birth they can give birth to the placenta and leave that umbilical cord to throb and to um, really deliver all of the antibodies necessary for the baby to uh, start life with uh, with these healthy elements. Well, 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 how long is this umbilical cord supposed to be attached? Well, look, some doctors cut right away. Yes. Okay, and some people choose to literally, I've seen pictures of this, okay, they literally have a tray where they put the placenta in the tray and they carry the tray along their sides so that eventually the umbilical cord falls off. And so there are different levels of connect disconnect here uh, but what I'm really going to delve into is beyond the birthing process uh, there are many wounds that occur uh, throughout life and particularly in the first few months and years of life and that some of those wounds are called infiltrations as you'll, you'll hear in a moment I'm going to read a couple paragraphs from her new book okay go ahead you're going to okay. do that now yeah, we can whenever you're ready go ahead I'm ready okay um, this is actually from Chapter 1, uh, Panel 1, entitled The Wound of Judy's book, which will be entitled? Healing Human Disconnect. Okay. So, uh, and Judy has no idea what I'm going to read. This is going to be a surprise. <laughs> but I did, you know, yeah, well, have you something you to do with you it, you had so it can't to do with be it. that much yeah. of a surprise. No, Go ahead. I'm, imagine infiltrations as, quote, the psychological virus that attack our sense of self, our health, and our well-being. Not unlike physical viruses that seek to destroy the body's defenses system, infiltrations act like an army assaulting the stronghold of your self-conception and slaughtering it with every means of arsenal. Lies, fabrications, half-truths, deceptions, misrepresentations, and myths. Fending off these deeply rooted feelings of neglect, depravity, abuse, these mercenary infiltrations have but one mission to annihilate your sense of self-worth and leave a gaping, quote, hole in the soul where joy once lived. The hole in the soul is that treacherous emptiness of self-loathing buried in the depths of our being. Like a malignant tumor, it's fed and fueled by human disconnect, the basis of all inorganic psychotherapy. Psychopathology. And psychopathology. Just okay. Oh, thank, see, she thank wrote you it. so much. The yearning and longing for unconditional love wired deep within us by source, which is, of course, our higher power, God, universe, remains unquenched, leaving us feeling abandoned, forsaken, and starved. 
thank you for that. Really so appreciate that's it. A couple of paragraphs of the of uh, the first chapter of uh, Dr. Judy's book will be out in a couple of months. She's just putting the finishing touches on. But uh, I thought it would start there as far as an intro of the wound. And uh, we've always we always talk about the whole in the soul. And Walt, you you have such an amazing voice. How would you like to do an audio version of this? Sure, I'd be happy to read it. I'd love you to Uh, do that. I'd be honored. So The Hole in the Soul, which is what our series is called, The Hole in the Soul series, and the word infiltrations. And let me expand on that a little bit. So as you heard, infiltrations is that army that infiltrates us. It's like a psychological virus. And infiltrations are multi-generational generational in nature, multi-generational, meaning that they are passed down from one generation to the next. So when we are wounded in childhood, be assured that our mothers and our fathers and our ancestors are also wounded and they pass down uh, these wounds to us. So I want to talk a little bit about two types of wounds. Uh, The first type being uh, overt wounds uh, and covert wounds, acts of omission and acts of commission. commission. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what's an act of omission? Whoops, I forgot to feed my baby when my <coughs> baby was crying. Whoops, I forgot to um, uh, pay attention to my baby when she was smiling, and so therefore she stopped smiling. Oops, I forgot to change the baby because the box said up to seven pounds, and I misunderstood what the seven pounds meant. Right. Okay, so th- those are acts of commish- o- omission, omission, meaning that we're not doing something that we need to be doing now the commission part is more um flagrant abuse uh commission might be literally hurting your baby uh, literally burning scathing and we have all kinds of horrific examples of 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 of, of really intense um um child abuse yeah Go ahead and, and read what's interesting what's is a uh, correlation is this month <coughs> April is actually National Child Abuse Prevention Month, mm-hmm. and so the uh, it, it's a big deal from the, the actually the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention are, are conducting some stuff, but there's some very interesting facts. Um, this stuff's tough, you know. I was reading, doing some research. This is tough. Uh, facts about child maltreatment. Okay, mm-hmm. they're really trying to water it down already. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, According to the Child Protective Services agencies, more than 686,000 children were victims of maltreatment in 2012. And that's just in the United States? It's just the United States alone. Uh, Another 1,640 children died in the United States in 2012 from abuse and neglect. Now, of course, those are the ones that they know about, Mm -hmm. right? Right. The financial cost for the victims in society is is quite substantial. A recent CDC study showed that the total lifetime estimate fiscal fiscal cost associated with just one year confirmed cases of child maltreatment is up to 124 billion dollars oh with a b wow. now there's many types of child maltreatment um and uh, the, the, the four types to talk about are physical abuse mm-hmm. sexual abuse emotional abuse neglect and neglect mm-hmm. now physical abuse basically of course is the use of physical force hitting kicking Shaking, burning, or any other short sh- uh, shows of force uh, against a child. Mm-hmm. Sexual abuse, of course, is in about 10% of the cases. Um, and includes ba- behavior such as fondling, penetration, or exposing a child to other sexual activities. Mm-hmm. Emotional abuse refers to behaviors that harm a child's self-worth or emotional well-being. Mm-hmm. It inclu- includes, of course, name-calling, shaming, rejection, withholding love, and threatening. And then lastly, neglect. Uh, meet the child's basic physical and emotional needs, housing, food, clothing, education, and access to medical care. And one of my uh, heroes is John Bowlby, Dr. John Bowlby, who is the father of attachment theory, and he talks about secure attachment and anxious attachment and different styles of attachment, and he studied orphans back in England uh, in the early 1900s and found that babies who are not touched um, fail to thrive mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Um, if you've ever seen a baby who's given up it's it's really 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 sad to see a baby stop crying because when a baby's in distress and crying there's still hope there isn't there the baby yes. wants something it's the reaching baby out is reaching out right. and the best well, way it knows how to do right and once the baby stops reaching out that baby is really in trouble because that baby understands that there's nobody out there 
And so one of the, uh, the terms that I talk about, we talk about here on the show, is the concept of the, the double dungeon. And so... The and the double dungeon <laughs> basically is uh, the relationship you have or don't have with your mother is a reflection of your inner world. And the relationship you do or don't have with your father is, is a relation of your reflection of your outer world. And if you didn't have a good relationship with either one, double dungeon. Right. So in terms of the first panel, and if you're near a computer, go to the website, which is www.drjudywtf.com. And um, you will see um, on the um, on the website mm -hmm. uh, panel one, which um, it, I call the wound. Mm -hmm. And um, panel one actually is used by me in therapy as a metaphor and one of the, the ways that I use it is it looks to me like an occluded eye and the occlusion if we ca can take it to another level is the eye meaning I meaning me is now fractured and because we form the sense of ourself through the eyes of our mothers and now we're learning that the fovea and the eye contact is such a an important part of the emotional feeding mechanism so when the mother is absent when the gaze is not um, there to create a holding environment between the baby and the mother and have that connection going uh, the baby who is like a sponge sponging in the experience of the world they are sponging everything in fact right. let me give you an example I was re listening to a, a tape today of a gentleman speaking and uh, he, he met a lady who as an infant a mother really didn't have a lot of money mm -hmm. and not enough money to uh, to buy food and milk mm -hmm. and um, she gave up asking for food because she could actually sense the stress in the mother that she and she didn't want to cause any more stress so she just went hungry and didn't cry anymore because she realized it wasn't going to do any good and mm -hmm. she didn't want to experience the stress mm -hmm. and feel it because she couldn't talk um, and didn't want to stress out her mom and so later in life she she kind of went well I can't ask my mother to do anything because she didn't can't help me right. so she didn't have anybody do any help her for anything and so she felt she was it was all on her own and how to you know go through life right and, and it so was a huge paradigm shift for her at age 42 mm -hmm. Wow okay so while you're talking about the beginnings of the hole in the mm -hmm. soul I'm sure this child was a little bit older than one month, two month, three month, six month, because she had cognitive abilities mm -hmm. to understand what was going on with mother, and she didn't want to distress the mother. Right. But children do pick up on the yes, fact that the mother is not available, right. and so when they get into this hopeless state of shutdown, um, then then they become these I call them closed down um, membranes, and the defense mechanisms, these early defense mechanisms, start to um, to build. And when people close down in that way, they can't let in the light. They mm -hmm. can't let in the, the emotional nutrients. And, of course, they lose trust in the world. To read this a little farther, it says, Child maltreatment causes stress that can disrupt early brain development. And yes. serious chronic stress can harm the development of the nervous and immune system. Absolutely. As a result, children who are abused or neglected are at higher risk of health problems as adults. They may be alcoholism, depression, drug addiction, eating disorders, obesity, high-risk sexual behaviors, smoking suicide, and certain chronic diseases. So the goal here is for the child to feel safe. Right, and, and, I, and, and stability. I, and stability. Mm -hmm. It's consistency, stability. Yes. And when that hole in the soul is activated later on in life, when there's an abandonment or there's a life stressor, then uh, that original um, hole um, gets um, reactivated again. And then that causes a lot of chaos, which we'll talk about uh, down the line in panel four. Uh, but you can see that. In looking at panel one, you see this occluded eye, and the occluded eye represents the uh, the disconnect between the mother and the infant, and the the sense of uh, fractured perception that the child is now um, being infiltrated with, if you will, because that is exactly how we form a sense of self. Right. It is through the eyes of our mother that we yep, form a healthy eye, a, a healthy sense of self. So when that lack of connection is not there, how can we do that? Well, here's a statistic for you. 14% of all men in U.S. prisons and 36% of all women in prisons were abused. 
well, in childhood. Is, is that a big surprise? No, not right. not not so much. Okay. The surprising part is that it, it, over twice as many women than men are. Twice as many women are in prison from from admitting you know have abuse. And okay. again, I'm sure those numbers are are conservative, but nonetheless, you know, there's there's uh, proof right there. So everything that begins to exist has a cause. Yes. And so uh, I spend a lot of my time and treatment with uh, in playing what I call psychological detective. detective. And I take the symptoms and I use these symptoms as um, ways to track what happened, who done it, what happened in that early phase of the, uh, the development. Because until we really get a hold of that, until we really start to deal with the wound and clean the wound, which we will talk about later on in the process of the mind map, we're really stuck with it. And so what happens is we we ingest it and then we turn symptomatic and we have all kinds of reactions to it and it gets buried in the fiber of our being and then later on gets expressed in all kinds of negative core beliefs which we started getting into uh, on previous episodes uh, but we can now see that the, the hole in the soul is caused by the neglect, did you say? There were four of them. Neglect, sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional and abuse, emotional and, then, abuse. and then the needs, of course, of, of, the, of the child. Right. And, and if, if you have issues with this regard, um, good or bad, mm -hmm. we really, really, really would like to hear from you. Yes, uh, so this is, is, is a call-in show. Yeah, it is a call-in show. And you can call us at area code 323-843-8432. Mm -hmm. In the 323 area. Or if you don't want to speak to us but want to ask a question, you can go to info at drjudywtf.com and reread everything that comes in. And while you were talking about the response of the brain to this disconnect, and it is so that the right hemisphere and the left hem hemisphere, the left being the logical brain and the right being the emotional brain, the left hemisphere doesn't kick in till later. Right. And as some of my colleagues say, it doesn't go on, um, how do you say, when... It, it isn't uploaded in the computer. It, it, well, does that mean it, 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 are the wires connected, or are right. they still being they're developed? They're starting to develop. Right, it's starting to still and be developed and connected. Right, and if there's stress on the baby, yes. then these two parts of the brain don't really know how to com communicate with right. each other. And now we're finding that the amygdala, which is the primitive part of our brain, which is the fight and flight part of our brain, um, when we're not emotionally held, when we're not emotionally attuned to and soothed, will get activated. It's, it's kind of like that first phase of the game, the first two, three years of life, yes. is it's so crucial. And I can't overemphasize to you, listeners, that... The most preventative thing that you can do to raise a healthy child is simply to be there. And oftentimes I will get mothers who and fathers who will be very angry at me because they want me to fix their child or they want me to refer them to a psychiatrist and medicate their symptoms when indeed their symptoms are a result of mother-infant, father-infant disconnect. So let me give you an example. Um, I have mothers who come to my office and I'll see all kinds of symptoms, particularly symptoms like separation anxiety, hair pulling, and the like. And then in taking a history, and I do take a full history, then my main questions that I ask is, um, so mom, did you breastfeed your baby? Uh, was your baby born prematurely? Um, were you um, emotionally there for your emotionally baby? Emotionally present. Meaning... Were you um, were you present? Were 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 you not in a depressed state? Were you not in an anxious state? Were you not um, on drugs, the like? Okay, because emo emotional presence requires a clean, clear mind so that you can make that connection with the baby. So I ask these questions, and they're difficult questions sometimes for the mother to answer because, of course, they're going to get defensive. Of course, they're feeling that they're being blamed and shamed and, and I really do want to reiterate that this is not a blame shame model. No it's not. This is really a reparative model so that the mother can get involved in healing the disconnect between herself and her child and I have many techniques that I use to do this. We will get into this later because yes, it's super will. interesting it's and it's very effective. Mm -hmm. and It is. And uh, 
uh, and I, I've taken what I used to um, do in years down to a couple of months worth of work, and it's really, really quite reinforcing. What that for me really to means and implies, process. folks, is that the mind map, the the nine panel mind map that Judy's developed, really gets to the meat of the issue rather rapidly and. While it's it's painful for a short period of time, the the results are are lasting. So you're not in therapy forever, and uh, it's like it's like a band aid, right? When you pull off a band aid, what's the best way to pull off a band aid? Short, really, really, really quick, or slow? You know, for the parents that are listening, please understand that you can really be an integral part of healing your child, and yes, that absolutely. oftentimes we don't know the damage that we're doing mm-hmm. and. We talk about childhood being a, uh, you say it, Walt, you like to say it so often. <laughs> childhood really is a hostage situation, which I still think we should call the show that. But anyway. It's a great title. It's a, it's a, it's a great title. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's a lot of myths about, about um, child abuse as well. Um, I've got four of them, I believe. Um, and uh, one of them is that it only, it, it's only abuse is violent. And uh, physical abuse is just one type. Neglect and emotional abuse are just as damaging since they're more subtle and others less likely to uh, intervene because you can't, can't see it. And I just wanted to comment about that. Oftentimes children will act out because they want the attention. They'd rather be bad and get some sort of attention than to all. be ignored. It's much more painful mm-hmm. to um, be ignored and disconnected from. Yeah. Yeah. Myth number two is only bad people abuse their children. While it's easy to say that only bad people abuse children, it's not so black and white. Not all abusers are intentionally harming their children. Many have been victims of abuse themselves and don't know any other way to be a parent. Mm-hmm. Others may be struggling with mental and health issues or substance abuse problems. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I don't think anybody wakes up in the morning and thinks, <laughs> no. oh, I'm going to abuse my child I'm going to create a hole in the soul that'll be fun you know it doesn't work that way there's often a multi-generational history of of their families um, being neglectful or physically harmful to to them and it just gets passed down it's all they know I mean I give you an example of that a simple quick example if you want to hear one Mm -hmm. Um, this is this has kind of been around for a long time is a family was getting together for I believe it was either Christmas or Thanksgiving and the wife was newly married, and she cut both ends of the ham off and then put it put it in the oven. And the husband's looking, going, what in the world are you doing? Why in the heck are you cutting off both ends of the ham? Well, that's just the way we, we, we always did it at our house. Mm-hmm. So they called up uh, mom. Mom says, yep, that's how we did it. That's, we just cut off both ends of the ham and put it in the oven. Mm-hmm. Called grandma. Grandma said, yeah, that's how we did it. That's what we did. We cut both ends of the ham off. And then grandma said, and the reason was, and again, you know, going back four generations, right? Well, the pan I originally had back in the day didn't fit the whole ham. Oh my so God. the only way to get the ham into the pan, because I had a small pan because I couldn't afford a bigger one, was to cut both ends off. So as a result, four generations later, they're still doing what my mom did and cutting both ends of the ham off so it fits in the pan. And all we're doing is asking why. Because <laughs> that's, that's a really important question. And they had to go back okay. four generations and get this answer. right? I mean, it could be something as simple as that. I right? love that example. That's such a great example. And it's a, a true example. story. And it's a true story. It's like, mm-hmm. well, I watch my mom every Christmas, every Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Cut. Wait, 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 why? Uh, that's because my mom, we always did it that way. And you know what's astounding is that we normalize behaviors that are not really natural. And uh, we yeah. call them okay because we've been doing them for generations and generations. Uh, case in point, there was a method of letting the child cry it out called the fervor yes. method. Yes. We yes. talked about that. Yes. And the fer- fervor or ferber? Ferber. Ferber method ferber. was about allowing the child to build character by letting he or she cry it out. And it really was more for the parents than it was for the child because the premise was that you, you've got to let your baby cry because then the p- baby's going to run your life. And so if you want to have a normal life and you want to sleep through the night, then you've got to start training your child to cry it out and hold its emotions and self-soothe. And just the very opposite is true. Yes. because Self-soothing. The, right. In order 
for a baby to learn how to self-soothe, they have to be soothed. And a baby cannot, ha, a newborn cannot soothe No, they have um, no, no, no tools or There's concept. There's no way. They have to learn by example. Right. And yeah. so when you stress an emotion, a uh, baby's emotions out to this degree, what happens is they get overly anxious and that they learn yes. that um, their world is not soothing, not safe, not something that they can really rely on. And the last thing you want to do is stress out a baby because, again, the b brain function, okay, these dendrites and all of the uh, the brain chemicals oh, are neurons. starting to balance yeah. and the, the neurons and mm -hmm. so on and the corpus callosum, the connective um, uh, pathway between the left and the right hemisphere. Mm -hmm. And we are psychobiological creatures, meaning that we, our psychology and the way we are treated interacts with our biology. And then when the treatment doesn't go right, then everything messes up chemically, neurologically, and so on. And so I can't overemphasize being there for your children. Uh, one of the things that, that's very challenging for me as a psychologist is dealing with mothers who have to or do Work. put their children in daycare. Sooner and this is later. really, mm -hmm. really tough because mothers yeah. will feel really judged by me. And I, 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 I tell them that I, I'm not nature. I'm just reporting on nature. And nature is very specific. Nature requires that for a healthy human psyche to be formed, you need consistency eye contact and you need a primary caregiver to be doing this. You can't have a bunch of multiple caregivers um, stepping in and doing the caregiving because it's this is called attachment. You want to s form a healthy bond to a primary attachment figure. Lifelong attachment. And that means if it's father, then it's father. And that means that if the primary person is going to be the stay-at-home dad, that's fine. It's just that once you establish that, that father has to stay at home and yes. be there consistently. If the mm. mother goes to work and she wants to come in every eight hours or so, as long as the baby has that primary attachment figure that's consistent throughout the first few years of life, then the baby can form secure attachment. So again, parents listening, please call and I want to hear from you. Uh, this is a call-in show. Yes, it is. 323-843-843. <laughs> Two eight two six, and uh, so you're saying, Doctor, it's uh, it's nature and nurture. It's nature and nurture, yeah. right? And the big battle, nature nurture, and we have to understand that we are the cause of the outcome of our children's lives. Uh, be the cause, which is the name of my entire mind map system. Be the cause, healing, healing human, human disconnect. disconnect is really um, speaking to the fact that we are not the cause of part one of our lives. We are at the effect of, remember, we are like these sponges soaking in the world. And if, what, if what's coming into us, if what's being infiltrated into us is a bunch of darkness, neglect, abuse, emotional, physical, then we're going to sponge that in and we're going to have some pretty... Um, intense reactions to that and then some pretty negative core beliefs um, blueprinting off of that so remember if you want a healthy human being you've got to follow nature well and remember the most important thing is you know, there's two parts there's a beginning and a finish right I mean mm -hmm. okay so the first part of life that you had no control over is kind of messed up right? right okay and we all know that if you continue to look in your rear view mirror if you're driving a car and you focus on the rearview mirror and look, you know, I had a messed up childhood, all you're going to get at is crashed. You're going to crash. Right. The issue is not how you start, but how you finish. Right. So this system is not really about being stuck in no, analysis paralysis not. and no. trying to figure out what happened, what happened, what happened. But it really is about moving you through the wound and healing the wound and taking responsibility for the outcome of part two of your life, which is where you get to be the cause. So this is really a from through to model from the wound and the reaction to the wound and the encoding of the wound and through the process of dismantling the old coding and then cracking open the defense mechanisms that sometimes smother us, other times help us, and then eventually um, 
taking the whole thing down into um, instead of imploding and exploding, you're really unloading, unloading and expressing, and not projecting onto other people or hurting yourself uh, by suppressing the Again, feelings. The, the best example is we as we uh, get into further panels and you listen to them all. Uh, it's really a paradigm shift, right? Instead of cutting both ends of the ham off and throwing in the oven mm -hmm. it's better just to leave it alone and put it in its entirety but in, in order for you to do that if mm -hmm. all you've learned is cutting both ends of the ham off is you have to go back figure out the you know what the challenge is what the problem is what the cause was right and then work on a solution and typically at least from what, what little I've gathered from Judy from my hanging out with her is the solution is rather permanent we're not talking about again as a short-term situation and uh, does the uh, transformations are phenomenal. I mean, this is not a foolproof guaranteed gig, but hey, it works. And getting back to some the myths and facts of child abuse, like a couple more. Child abuse does not hap does not happen only doesn't happen in good families. Child abuse does, doesn't always happen in poor families and bad neighborhoods. It crosses all racial, economic, and mm -hmm. cultural lines. Sometimes family who seem to have it all on the outside are hiding a different story behind closed doors on the inside. And I got a couple of more myths regarding child abuse. Mm -hmm. um, most child abusers are strangers. While abusers by strangers do happen, most abusers are family members or others close to the family. Because again, if we're dealing with non-physical, but emotional and neglect and whatnot, that's, that's typically with family members. And Walt, that brings to light the fact that it is so important to be so close to your child and not give the child over to multiple mm -hmm. caregivers. Right. I can't right. tell you how many stories of, of um, I, I've heard from parents who found out that their child was sexually abused by a housekeeper and now they have to pay the consequence the whole family has to pay the consequence yes, of for that. a long time not that every housekeeper is a child abuser no However, and that's and that's myth number five abused right. children always grow up to be abusers not the case okay strong motivation to protect their child against what they went through and they become excellent parents is also motivation mm -hmm. yeah yeah and uh, some of the effects of child abuse and neglect really quickly are, I mean, we've talked about a lot of it, and, but one is lack of trust and re in relationship difficulties. You have, you ha you have disconnected. You're, you're right. having challenges connecting right. with, with anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, core feelings of feeling worthless and being damaged. And if you have that belief, um, it's really not your fault uh, that you're not worthy or that you feel worthless. That's basically how you were trained growing up before you even knew you were being trained mm -hmm. and the only way to do that is to pull out that virus and and reboot the software and put something else in and the way to do that is through dr judy and the mind map and she's having a special that's doing through yelp and it's half price so if you want to call her office you can and her telephone number again in the la area she, she actually does phone therapy and we're working on skype as well is area code 310 Seven three nine four four nine one. That's Dr. Judy's direct telephone number. Area three ten seven three nine four four nine one. And she'll and mention that you heard us from the show. She will call you back, and you're dealing directly with Dr. Judy. Okay, so um, if you want to be rebooted, rewired, and realize, hey, I'm having these awful, awful feelings. I just can't shake it. My inner voice, which we talked about last week, is. You know, I'm not worthy, I'm worthless, uh, nobody loves me, I'm unlovable. Mm -hmm. We went through a whole list, and there's mm -hmm. going to be a list in her book. Um, it's really not anything you can come overcome. The, the willpower ain't going to cut it. You need to do some, some rebooting and some pulling out of the virus that you've got and replace it with something. And the transformation is so worth it. It's so worth it. And, and you know, the, the, the beauty of the work that I do is that I'm able to take the symptoms that people present me with and really source it back to cause. Today I was working with a young woman and she was telling me that she has insomnia and anxiety and um, in looking into it further, it turns out that her mother was quite emotionally unavailable uh, to her. And so we talked about the fact that when we get up in the morning, our defenses are down. And so the infant piece of ourselves, we always carry that, that inner child, that inner infant. And so when life stresses us a little bit more, 
or when we're waking up in the morning and we're coming out of our dream state, it's a state of, of, of vulnerability. And so these primitive feelings will be right there in the, uh, uh, on the surface available to us so that we could see the anxiety, the insomnia, insomnia um, is, is, is caused by this anxious attachment, this lack of attunement. So then she can see that she's not crazy she's not sick she can understand that she wasn't properly attuned to and then she has to grieve the loss of of this piece of the parenting that she didn't have and learn how to soothe herself and to express the hurt and the pain around uh, the failure to um, give this particular narcissistic supply emotional supply if you will and lastly I want to finish the effects of child abuse and neglect is trouble regulating emotions right abuse children cannot express <clears throat> emotions safely as a result emotions get stuffed down coming out in unexpected ways adult survivors of child abuse can struggle with unexplained anxiety depression and anger which we've just talked about right. they may turn to alcohol and drugs to numb the pain as well right so this is a case of inability to regulate affects our affects. Um, our parents are supposed to regulate our affects. So if yeah. they don't do it for us, then how the hell are we supposed to learn how to regulate Absolutely. our affects? And if we can't regulate our affects, then we try to pull it out of the environment and we use drugs, sex, rock and roll, whatever. Today I was very privileged to be in a study group in a, a group of, of, of professionals led by yeah. Dr. Walter Brockelmans, who mm -hmm. I hope he's listening. Call in, Walt, please. Hey, doctor. And we, we talked about um, being addicted to porn. And so, again, these symptoms of addiction, porn, alcohol, any kind of uh, uh, addiction, fills that hole in the soul because what we want really is the, um, the stimulation of that good feeling of the, the dopamine that calms us and the uh, other drug that stimulates us. And so when we don't have the, um, the ability to regulate our affect, then we're gonna use outside sources to do that for us. And then we get into trouble. You know, we get DUIs and we end up in rehab and we ruin our relationship because we're on the computer looking for porn, looking for better and better porn that's going to get us higher and higher and higher because uh, it's never high enough. And then we get bored with that particular picture and we've got to move the file along and get something even better. And it's a never-ending cycle. And again, it goes back to panel one, cause. It's the causal panel. I call it the motherboard. I'll, there you I go. call it the control panel of the rest of our lives. And that's how serious it is. So if your parents take it really seriously and understand that the best thing you can do, and you can save yourself a lot of money uh, by um, not having to put your child later on into therapy and avoid the whole uh, treatment plan, because you are the treatment plan. You are the treatment plan. You're the soother. You're the consistent nurturer. You're the ones that can give the eye co contact and the skin contact and the breastfeeding. And there's, there's nobody else that will really, really care to attune to the baby as much as a healthy parent. Because they want to. They're built. We're, we're wired to connect. And in, in a couple of weeks, we're going to have a very special guest on our show. His name is Dr. Stan Tatkin. And I'm looking forward to meeting him. He's written him. a really amazing book entitled, yes. several books, but the mm -hmm. one is called Wired for Love. Yes, yeah. Wired it's a, it's a, for it's Love. It's a great book. It's, a, it's primarily a relationship book. And, and so this basically concludes panel one, which is really the origin, the beginnings of the wound, and the darkest point and part. Next week, we're going to address a little bit more about the light, because the only way you can get out of the darkness is with the light, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And how, how, the, how we react to the wound. So, um, and so we are now at our point of uh, shrinking that tune. And again, if you want to have a, th of a uh, session with Dr. Judy or talk to her, uh, her direct telephone number is area code 310 739 4491. And uh, she's available usually morning, noon, and night. 
No, just kidding. Well, <laughs> not all night, but I'll return your calls. We are in a shrink a tune, and it's from a group called Image Dragons, and the title of the song is Reactive. So radioactive. A radioactive. I can't. I can't read today. It's okay. I can trace okay. though. I promise. Uh, radioactive, and uh, so I'm going to read the the song, and then we're going to play it. And one of my favorite go. songs, Imagine Dragons, Radioactive. I believe they played it at the Grammys, and it's such a powerful, powerful song. And I chose it because I love it, and it also reminds me of the wounds of childhood so go ahead and whoa that. whoa 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 i am waking up to ash and dust i wipe my brow and i sweat my rust i'm breathing in the chemicals i'm breaking in shaping up then checking out on the prison bus that is the apocalypse whoa Whoa. Okay. Whoa. So if we're going to take the darkness of childhood, and by the way, I know there's a lot of light too. So we just try to today yeah. emphasize the darker side of the light because we're talking about the wounds. So um, as you know, we start our um, show off with um, Club to Death. Yes. The title of the song we, we play, I, I meant to mention that, is Club to Death, which interestingly enough is from The Matrix. I modified a little bit, um, and it's in the original Matrix movie. And actually, some feel it's one of the top 20 uh, theme songs of all time for movies. Well, also, the mind map is a Matrix, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yes, so it we is. chose that, I think, unconsciously. And then I, I did. went, whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa, whoa. I did. I picked it <laughs> unconsciously of sorts. Interesting that yeah. you chose that. So back to the radioactive words. I'm waking up to ash and dust. So here we are born, and childhood is a hostage situation. So in some cases, we truly are waking up to ash and dust. We're now blinded by the light of birth. And so what do we find? Doctors sucking out the... Um, mucus from our mouth and giving us tests and all kinds of things are going on. I wipe my brow, I, smet, I sweat my rust, I'm breathing in the chemicals, the chemicals of the air, because of course we are in polluted environments, so we're mm -hmm. not just getting the, right. the, the purity of the mother's um, oxygen. I'm breaking in, shaping up, then checking out on the prison bus. Okay, so again, the prison bus. There we're it is. locked in there. There it is. We locked are in. hostages. Locked in. And we're in the apocalypse of childhood now. <laughs> yes, we are. So. But you know what? I'm waking up. I feel it in my bones. Enough to make my system blow. Welcome to the new age, to the new age. Whoa. I'm radioactive, radioactive. Yeah, well, isn't this an, a generation of radioactivity? Yes. So sure not are we only are we talking about the re radioactivity and the darkness of, 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 of being uh, an infant in the arms of a mother who may not be the healthiest, but we also have a lot of radioactivity in our air supply. So welcome to the new age. Things are not that pure. We're not really that attuned to nature. We're not attuned to the needs of our children, our babies. So we're blowing the systems and the babies are feeling it down to the core of their bones. I raise my flags, don my clothes. It's a revolution, I suppose. We'll paint it red to fit right in. Whoa. I'm breaking in, shaping up then checking out on the prison bus this is the apocalypse whoa so speaking of red flags we spoke a lot today about the wounds of childhood neglect sexual abuse so on i raise my flags there are all kinds of red flags yes it is a revolution in the sense that a baby and a mother are supposed to be a very very um integrated yes force right and sometimes they're not so sometimes there's this kind of a revolution going on and we're back to the chorus <clears throat> again this is image dragons radioactive i'm waking up i feel it in my bones enough to make my system blow welcome to the new age to the new age um and whoa i'm radioactive so that's the song and that's our show next week we are going to delve into panel two of dr judy's mind map and um so stay tuned for that and if you want to talk to her you sure can call her directly area 310 i lost the number oh, i know it's 310 
I call all the time, but it's in my phone. <laughs> <laughs> 7, 739-4491. That's 739-4491 in the 310 area code. Or you can email us at info at drjudywtf.com. And, of course, you can pull our previous shows on Stitcher and iTunes mm-hmm. and, of course, here at UBN Radio. And thank you so much for listening. Thank Our you audience so much, everyone. is building, really appreciate, and I really yes. appreciate every one of you for tuning in. Yep. And so uh, that's our show, and here's our tune. Mm-hmm.